usually I record these videos on Sunday and just say that it's Monday and then upload them on Monday and then it actually is Monday and it's all magical and wonderful. But this weekend I was insanely busy and did not actually have time to do this on Sunday. I don't really even have time to do this right now to be perfectly honest. So I hope you guys all did exciting things for St. Patrick's Day because I was stuck in a basement of a building in my school all day on Saturday and Sunday editing a video project for a class that is due on Wednesday. If I had to be stuck in the basement editing video all weekend, I'm glad I at least got to be in good company while I was doing it. I did get to go out for birthday festivities both on Friday and Sunday nights and meet the world's most awesome rose seller. Okay, right. <laughs> bye bye, good luck. <laughs> So I guess I can't complain too much. I mean, of course I can continue to complain for the rest of forever and I probably will continue to complain quite a bit, but I shouldn't complain. Speaking of not complaining, I got off the metro right at 11 o'clock last night and got to witness the hourly Eiffel Tower twinkling for my entire walk home. It's not like I just got to Paris. I've seen this sight now more times than I can count, but it never fails to leave me just a little bit awestruck. I see it and I just have this overwhelming feeling of, I live in Paris, that's amazing. I don't think that will ever get old for me, at least I certainly hope it won't. This is the kind of magical thing about the relationship that we can have with places. Many people might tell you that this capacity to catch you off guard with its magnificence is a uniquely Parisian thing, that only Paris can do this to you. While Paris is admittedly very good at catching me off guard with how wonderful it is, I have had this feeling in other cities, US cities, during my undergrad in DC when I would get stressed out, sometimes I would just walk to the Lincoln Memorial and sit on the steps. Again, I would have that moment of, oh, I live here. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's just awesome that certain places can have that much power just by being and possessing whatever their remarkable history or beauty or whatever it is and just d grab you and say, hi, I'm here and I'm wonderful. That's kind of my goal. That's how I want to feel about every place that I live. Since I felt it in multiple cities, I think it's sort of a testament that if I don't feel it, then something is off. Something is not right about that environment and either it's me or it's the place, but it, it, <laughs> but clearly they don't go together. Finding these spaces that are imbued with the sort of magic that can make me smile just by being in my city has been a core part of how I've maintained my sanity pretty much since I graduated from high school and left home. Sometimes you just need a reminder that life can be kind of awesome. Brittany, I know this is kind of a big question because you're still at home, but is there anything in particular that you're most looking forward to about Germany? Better still, since your time at home is probably going to end sooner than you realize. What is it that you love most about being at home? What is it that you love most about being where you are right now? After all, that has really been my point the entire time, appreciating where you are right now. And on that note, I have to go to work now. These are the moments where it becomes extra important to appreciate where I am right now. Brittany, I will see you tomorrow.